Hey friend, here's a viewer question from MH. MH asks this, what would be a typical time frame from tree removal to grazing pasture? Well, I would say MH that that happens in about four years, give or take, before you start seeing a, what I call a usable pasture. And really MH, it's an in incremental progression. The first year uh, after clearing a piece of land, taking it from woodland covered dense woods or brushy area and clearing it all, that first year or season of, you know, summer season, spring and summer season, you're going to see very little, if any, grass and you're going to see an explosion of what we call broadleaf weeds. And these are generally weeds that, except for goats and mules and maybe donkeys, they're pretty unpalatable to most other types of livestock, those things are going to explode. The second year you're going to see a little more grass and still a, a substantial number of broadleaf weeds, but it's at that point you need to start doing something about those weeds and cutting them before they go to seed. And, and really that's topping them. Basically you're cutting the top of those off before they have a chance to go to seed. And then the third year you're going to see a little more grass, uh, a more significant amount of grass, and even less broadleaf weeds, especially if you're, you know, taking the pains to top them before they go to seed. That fourth year is when the efficiency in grazing begins to get a little more significant, and that's when it starts to get fun. You're seeing more native grasses coming up. Uh, I intercede that with, you know, touches of clover here, there, and yonder, which begins to take off. Some areas clover is native too, but with proper management, and by that I mean don't overgraze it. If your animals are beginning to be on that land, don't overgraze it and, and ruin that grass start because they're going to be standing on that grass and give those weeds a chance to come back if you're not careful. So move them through and move them through quickly, but that fourth year is where things begin to get really fun and you start seeing um, all that toil pay off with more grass for your animals. And on that note, here's a related question from Donna who asks this, which year did you put your livestock on the newly cleared land? I'm wondering because I have new land I need to clear and work with for pasture, say about four acres to clear for pasture. Well. The way I do it, Donna, is I divide whatever grazable land I intend to have that I've just cleared, I'll divide it up into sections or cells or paddocks, whatever you want to call it. And how big I divide them up really depends on, or how big you will divide yours up, depends on the number of livestock that, you're, that you own or maintain or are grazing and running through. And to avoid the expense, I mean, of, of permanent fencing. Uh, I use temporary electric fence and uh, wooden posts that I can drive, that I, you know, sharpen the ends and I can drive them in the ground uh, in spring when the ground's really moist, and then put uh, homemade insulators made from PVC pipe on those posts and quickly run electric fence. It's cheap, it's easy to run, it um, uh, doesn't take a lot of trouble, and you've got good, especially if the, anim the animals need to be trained to the fence, and that's an important thing. You can't just put up an electric fence and then go buy a cow that's never seen one. You're going to have problems. So they've got to be introduced in a certain way. But for animals that are used to electric fence, you can divide these portions of newly cleared land up into these cells and rotate these animals through there and even improve your grazing. And I start I start rotating animals on newly cleared land almost immediately, but the trick is, you know, you don't want them, if you've got very little grass, and you have very little grass that first year, you don't want them to overgraze it or ruin it or stand on it and, because they will kill it. You need to run them through very quickly onto the next section uh, if, if you've even got enough grass there to make it worth it. The second year, you'll be a little more grass, but still, don't overdo it. Don't overgraze it. You've got to run larger amounts of animals through smaller portions of land quickly. And you'll get a good eye, you'll begin to develop a good eye for, or it's time for them to leave, they're starting to, they've trampled it nice, but it's still alive, let's get them off there before they completely destroy it. And you'll, you'll begin to get a sense for when to do that. Now Donna, if you've got four acres, you might want to divide that up anywhere 
uh, from four sections, meaning um, each section is an acre, or maybe eight sections, or maybe 16 sections. It, again, it depends on how many animals you've got and how quickly you can are able to rotate them through there without them destroying the grass that's growing. And even if it's winter, I might rotate these animals uh, quickly on through and at the same time, I'm putting out, if you're feeding supplemental hay, round bales, you put those round bales out there, especially on, on areas that may look more infertile than others, and that grass seed from the round bales is going to spread and be growing that next spring. So I might even rotate the animals through those sections in winter. Again, you just don't want them, you know, staying in one spot and destroying that section but spread the hay out you know as you're rotating them through the rule of thumb is to move them through an area fast enough that they don't have time because uh, they're choice of eaters they're going to eat the best stuff move them through so that they eat it consistently and evenly quickly and then get them out that's kind of the the rule of thumb and again that depends on how big the area is and depends on how many animals you have for more on pasture development uh, clearing land methods of clearing land or developing pasture you can watch uh, the videos on the farmhands companion channel that i have listed in the description here below and if you'd like to join in the discussion with your own insight to rotational grazing or pasture development add it to the comments here below. Maybe you got a question on anything. I really appreciate you watching and I hope you share these videos because it really helps the channel grow a whole lot and I do appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Paul Mack and we'll talk at you later. Stunned at Sunset 7649. That was superbly instructive, Paul Mac. I use a scythe on my little homestead, and your presentation was very, very useful. Oh, good. good. I'm glad. Deborah Danhauer, 8525. I like the sound they make, that schnick, schnick sound when they're cutting. You know what? That's right. They do sound, they sound just like that. Is that an animatopoeia?